Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Tuesday, February 16th, month half over already. In fact, more than half over. There's only 28 days this month. <coughs> I want to thank, as always, those of you that watch, that are committed to these videos, those of you that share them. Uh, God has a message, especially for people that are watching that uh, that faith, their faith is kind of like f just flickering, or they've never put their faith in Jesus yet. Uh, so let's get started. We're in Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to read verses 18 through 26. You're going to look at some incredible faith here this morning from these stories. Morning, Marcy. Morning, John. Morning, Paul. Morning, Mary. It says, while Jesus was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him. And said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. I will be healed. She said to herself, If only I touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said, Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. Then Jesus entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd. He said, go away, the girl is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by his, the hand and she got up. News of this spread throughout all the, that region. Now, as I read this story, did it, morning Grace, morning Roz, one Sherry, did, did you notice the incredible faith that these two people had? I mean, incredible faith, both of them. This, this ruler, this ruler that, that, that had never seen Jesus raise anyone from the dead. He was a Gentile ruler to have that kind of faith. And then the woman who, who, who believed that Jesus would heal her just by touching the, the edge of his cloak. These two people had incredible faith. Incredible faith. It's like, wow. What, what about you? What, what kind of faith do you have? Um, have you ever been so low and desperate that you felt no one cared, especially the Lord? Have you ever given up on your faith just out of time of desperation? Are, are you going through something right now in your life that you would think is just, there's little to no hope? Um, I'll... Look at the two people in these stories. Here's this man whose daughter died. Now, it doesn't say how old she was, but probably young, probably young, desperate, desperate. His daughter had just died, but he had faith. He had incredible faith to say to Jesus, I know you can bring her back to life. Wow. And then this woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, for 12 years going through this kind of torture, and she has faith believing that if I just could touch his cloak, I could be healed. What, what, what kind of incredible faith is that? Morning, Beth. What, morning, Anna. What, what, morning, morning, Grace. What, what incredible faith they had. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm fairly certain that if I had been either one of those, I would not have had that kind of faith. If that happened, in my, I wouldn't have that kind of faith. That had an incredible faith. Incredible faith. To believe that Jesus would raise his daughter and have never seen him do that before. To believe that just touching his cloak would, would heal them. That, that's an that's incredible faith. <laughs> incredible faith. Good morning, Michelle. Incredible, incredible faith. I read these stories and I think to myself, gosh, I don't have that kind of faith. And I don't know about you, but we we have the we have the whole story. We have everything here. We have everything. We know everything that God wants us to know about him. We we know Jesus now all the way to his death. These two people didn't know that. They didn't know that. They, they, didn't know, they didn't even know who Jesus was yet. They just knew that he could do incredible things, incredible things. And then and, and, and Jesus said, it was their faith that, that healed them. 
Now, I've talked to you about this before in my messages about why healing was so important at that time, because Jesus used that. He used those healings to show that he was from God. Uh, that's not, the, the need is not there this t today. We don't, God doesn't have to perform miracles to show us who Jesus is. We know who Jesus is. They didn't yet, so that's why Jesus used so many miracles. That's why he allowed the disciples to be able to do incredible miracles, <coughs> to prove that he was from God. But the faith that these people had was just incredible, incredible. Now, you're putting your faith, Scripture says that we are saved by, by faith, by putting our faith in Jesus, trusting that, that Jesus is God, trusting that Jesus died for our sins, trusting that if we invited Jesus into our life, we could have eternal life. Trusted that Jesus rose from the dead, and as a result, we too will rise from the dead. That takes faith, but not as much faith as these two people. Why does it not take that much faith? Because, because we know the truth. The, the, the Bible tells us about all those things. Now, we still have to do it. You still have to put your faith in Jesus. But they put incredible faith in Jesus. Faith that he... That that Jesus would rise, raise his daughter from the dead. Faith that she would be healed just by touching the edge of his garment. Incredible faith. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I think, I would love to have that kind of faith. I would love to have that kind of faith. There's going to be something that's going to happen to your life soon, and you are going to lose your faith. You're going to, you're going to start questioning God. Like, where are you, God? Don't you care about me? Why did this happen to me? Our faith is going to waver. Don't you wish that you had that kind of incredible faith? Well, we know where our faith comes from. I've told you too many times already. It says our faith grows from hearing God's word. So if you want that kind of faith, we have to keep... Trust me, just reading these scriptures gave me incredible faith just seeing the faith that these two people had but I want to I want to talk a little bit this morning now for I don't know but there's maybe many of you that watch this video now live and that will watch it later on especially when you get a hundred views that there has to be people from all over that are watching this there has to be people that every once in a while that, that, that'll spike Probably because just of the of the heading of the uh, that catches their attention to watch it, uh, so I don't know who's going to end up watching this video, but I want but I want to share the, the gospel, the good news about Jesus with you, okay? Just just in a simple in a simple way. Um, I've always shared with you. If you're watching this, there is a God. There is a God, and that God is a mighty God because of what He was capable of creating out of nothing. And, and that God created us, but we were separated from him because of the sin in our life. So God came down to earth to pay the price for our sin. We became, became a human and we called him Jesus. And, uh, and he paid a terrible price, he suffered and died on a cross, terrible death. Uh, to, so that if we put our trust in him, we could reunite with God. He was a connection between us and God. It was literally God anyway, but he was in a human form called Jesus. That if we put our faith, if we put our faith, our trust in that Jesus, then we would be reconnected with God. And, and it says this in, in, in Romans. I'm going to read this to you. It says, the word is near you, what I'm sharing with you now. It, it is in your mouth. It is in your heart. It, you're, 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 you're hearing it. You're, you're feeling it. You're sensing it. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Anyone who calls on the Lord will be saved. Scripture says that Jesus is literally knocking on the door to your heart. Now, he's not going to force his way in just knocks on the door to your heart so that if you were willing to open the door and say, Jesus, I want you in my life, Jesus promises that he comes in and he, and he gives us eternal life. 
and, and he promises that he, he will live within us forever, that he will put his Holy Spirit within us, never to leave us as a deposit guaranteeing us, eter guaranteeing us eternal life. So what are the two things that you have to do? You, you, you have to have faith, the kind of faith that we just talked about today, but, it, but, it, but, doesn't, but it's a simpler faith. It's just, it's just believing in your heart, everything I told you, not in your head. This is not a life insurance policy. That you believe it in your heart. That you, that you in your heart, you say, I believe that, Jesus, you are God. I believe, Jesus, that you love me. I believe, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe, Jesus, that you want me to be with you forever. And so then you... You, you open your mouth and you just, and you confess, you just say, God, Jesus, I want you. I want you in my life. There's no magic to this. There's no magic to this. It is believing in your heart and then inviting him into your life. And that Jesus promised you to, that as a simple result of that, he says, then I will give you eternal life. These people were, 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 the one was raised from the dead. The other one was healed of a disease she had for 12 years. You, you can have eternity in heaven forever. Simply, simply by believing who Jesus is and then inviting him into your life. So if you've never done that, you can do it on your own. You don't need someone there with you. you it, it, it's just you and Jesus. So if you've never done that in your life, have the faith, have the faith to do it. And then Jesus promises you that you will be saved. Everyone, listen, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call on him. And for those of you that are Christians, obvious Christians already, you may have loved ones. You may have loved ones. You may have family that, that maybe are not. How will they... It goes on to say here, you know, how will they believe? How will they believe if, if no one tells them? How will they ever believe if no one tells them? And it says, how beautiful are the people that do tell them. Share this video. Share this video. It's the gospel. It's the good news about Jesus. Share this video because you may have family and friends that have never made that commitment. And maybe just simply by hearing this, they'll make that commitment. We may never know until we get to heaven. But this is what we're called to do. This is Jesus' great commission. The, the last words he said, go, 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 make disciples everywhere. Share this video, okay? God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, tonight is our youth message impact at 7 p.m. And for those of you committed to this, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock again for our next day of the devotion. Have a great day. God bless you all.